Do you feel the movement, guys? Do you feel it all? Do you feel it all coming? I accept this endorsement of the state GOP to be the next state auditor of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. In the words of today's Boston Globe, you just heard from two women who are, quote, changing the face of the Massachusetts Republican Party. Now they make their first joint appearance since taking the stage Saturday in Worcester. I'm joined by State Representative Karen Polito. She's the Republican candidate for State Treasurer. Mary Connaughton got 85% of the vote down there in Worcester, and you were the endorsed Republican candidate for order. Did I get that right? Absolutely. Close enough. Before we get started, you agreed to take a, do a research project when you were here last week. I'm right. Other than Curry Healy, who again was running in tandem with somebody, you are the first women ever running for statewide office on the Republican side. Is that correct? Well, I think Jody Dow ran for Ooh. Jody Dow ran for Secretary of the Commonwealth. She did. We got to give Jody. I missed that one. Some attention. But the first time, two ever. Two. Yes. Two together. Yes. And Mary Connaughton. Would there, would any of this have happened? Not just you guys, but essentially a, a full slate other than the Attorney General position, were it not for the Scott Brown election on January nineteenth. Oh, I think that there were a lot of us already in the race by that, well before that. I've been campaigning since October because of my experience on the Turnpike Board, having been an auditor in the past, and see seeing a great need for that position to be filled by someone with the ca characteristics and qualifications that I have. And there have been a lot of people out there doing it for quite some time. This, this party, had this team has been building up over a period of months. Well, you're a pre-Brown candidate, I can't remember. Everybody remembers on election night, you were one of the people rousing the, everybody at Brown headquarters. But you, you weren't a declared candidate pre-Brown. No, that's correct. Would you have run were it not for Scott Brown's well, I, election? I, I, I believe in term limits, and 10 years is about right for me in the state legislature. So it was time for me to take on a new challenge or, or move on completely from public service. So I have to say, though, that the momentum that has been created because of the election is really deep and powerful. So I believe that the people are empowered with their vote and they're ready to make more change. So that did factor into my decision. You've both been here a lot. I know a lot about you. I've read your websites. You're both running as reformers. But the rhetoric at the Republican convention, I, I live in the real world. I know it's supposed to be. This utter trashing of the lack of reform by the Democrats, uh, education reform, mm -hmm. transportation reform, ethics reform, I'm a pension reform, even if they aren't everything you or your party might want, Mary Connaughton, don't the Democrats and Deval Patrick deserve some credit for doing something Well, some here? things definitely have happened, but I want to see the good. numbers. That are good. But I want to see the numbers. When transportation reform was passing, they were saying that it was going to save us $20 billion over the next 20 years. And I, if I were state auditor at the time, I would have said, hey, guys, to save $20 billion, you have to do A, B, C, D, and E. And then the new board would be accountable for A, B, C, D, and E. But that didn't happen. So you think the promise is bigger than what the I reality think the is going to be? I think a lot this. bigger. How about you? I mean, the major thing, both from Charlie Baker on down, or Charlie Baker through the whole lineup, the whole line is essentially this reform is garbage. You voted for some of this reform, some did you not? Some of reform, I did ethics reform. Of course, we needed that pension reform. Yes, I don't feel it's gone far enough. But certainly, uh, we need to do more with that. I say no pensions for politicians. Let's get started with that. And by the way, one of you, your potential Democratic opponent, Steve Grossman, said virtually the same thing it's a great last idea. week when he was here. And that's what should happen. Transportation reform, I voted against it because it was part of a larger bureaucracy. And this is the same party that's also raising taxes and, and not setting the field for growing jobs in the Commonwealth. And that's what people are upset about. I hear it across the Commonwealth. They're trying to make ends meet. They're tightening their belt. Yet you have a party that's growing government, wasting their money. So that's why there's a groundswell of people out there looking at us as candidates. When you guys watched the 6 o'clock news on Saturday night, I guess the convention was on Saturday, you read the paper on Sunday, and you obviously had, no one can deny, you had a wildly successful convention. When you saw that Charlie Baker got in this flap over the so-called transgendered uh, rights bill or the bathroom bill, if you pawn it, whatever, uh, what did you say in the privacy of your own home? Well, I, Honestly. I, the issue here now is fiscal responsibility. That's what people care the most about. You know, there's other issues that are tangential to, uh, to the main issues, but what people count, care about is the money that's left in their pocketbook at the end of but the day. But you can't say basic rights and anti-discrimination legislation are unimportant, and that's what the proponents say it is. By the way, do you support or oppose the bill? I, I oppose the bill. You, how about you? I oppose the bill. And, and were you not a little concerned that that's what got the headline the next morning? Obviously, well, the press was very fair. Me, it said to me that this was a great convention. And what was beautiful about it is the fresh faces that were there. I mean, they claim that we're fresh faces, <laughs> but they were much younger people <laughs> than us there that really represent the hope and the future of the party. So that's really what the story was about. And they didn't want to give it to us. OK, let's all continue talking to these two senior citizens, Mary <laughs> and Karen Polito. Talk about your predecessor for a second, if you're successful. 
Uh, Joe Danucci, what kind of job did he do? What, would you do? what grade would you give him? Everyone likes Joe Danucci. That I mean, was you my question, Mary. I love Joe Danucci, but how about I, the job I, he did? He'd get a solid B. I would give him a B, but I think, I, want, I think with this new era of transparency that's available because of technology, because of the dire fiscal straits that the Commonwealth is in, and let's, all fa let's face it, with a $21 billion unfunded pension liability, with an over $15 billion unfunded health care liability for retirees, and debt that keeps continuing to grow, and spending that continues to grow, we have to look at things a little bit differently. So you have to look at waste very closely. I'd give him a B. I like Joe Danucci, but I think in this era of technology improvements, and what do you give Tim Cahill, who would be your predecessor, you should you win? An overall B grade. But let, me, tell you, too. let me say what I think that needs to happen at the Treasury. At the Treasury, because yeah. Tim has done a, a pretty good job. Yeah. And I feel that uh, eight years is about right, and he's moving on, and I agree with him. That should be the term limit at the mm -hmm. Treasurer's Office. But one of the things about the Treasurer's Office, and maybe the auditors too, people don't know quite what they do, and it shouldn't really be a secret. You're talking about the Treasurer's Office, which is the financial nerve center of the Commonwealth. Money coming in, the lottery, the investments of the Commonwealth. That should be open available for everyone to understand who does business with the treasurer's mm -hmm. office, who wants to do business, who's giving to the treasurer. All that should be known. We need to do better with that. I want to talk about the campaign a little bit. And as we do, you can watch some footage of these two people um, walking onto the stage and obviously pretty good, two relatively happy people, I should say. <laughs> this state has the most abysmal record in the United States of America of electing women to major offices. Can we agree on that? By the way, do either of you know how many members of women we've ever sent to Congress? This is my favorite quiz. Do you have any idea? Do you have any idea? Mm. Forever. Ever in our history. Tell me why you're going to break the mold. Martha Coakley couldn't do it. Lots of Perry Healy couldn't do it. Why are you guys able to do what's been undoable in this state? Well, I, I, this isn't an issue of gender. This is not about gender. I'm so why have we ever looked? There have been no competent women before it, you two? This is about the qualifications. This is about the times. This is about having the right person at the right time for the job. I think that it's a, it's a new world out there. People are not considering gender as the issue. They want competence. They want someone that's going to help them keep the money in their pockets. I mean, that's what it's all about right now. You see the anger out there. You see the Tea Party movement growing. People are angry. They're, they don't like to see... What do you think of the Tea Party? I think, it's, I think it's very healthy. I think it's great to get people out there, let them speak their mind. You seek their endorsement? It, well, if, if they, I don't believe that they're, uh, they're, they plan on endorsing candidates. I'm but not if they sure. did, would you? I, of course I would. How about you? Yeah, absolutely. You know, I, I'm not seeking out endorsements either. I'm just not that kind of candidate. Mm -hmm. And they, they frankly aren't a lot of them there for me. But the, <laughs> the Tea Party people are just regular, hardworking people. That's the kind of person that I see when I go to their Do you agree with her that it has nothing to do with gender? You, you know, can't I, let me honestly tell you, believe let me say, that based Being on a this female history. candidate and being in the legislature as a female uh, member has been very challenging. It is hard. It's hard to raise money. It's hard to convince people that you're qualified for the job, you have to work even harder to get there. So we're prepared for that. But I think the qualification that we have, we're independent thinkers. I'm someone that's had a backbone and stood up to both my own party and the other party to do what's right for the people. But I also think being a Republican this year is absolutely a good thing because we are the party that's representing the people in the middle that are paying all the taxes, getting squeezed, and they're tired of it. So that's actually, a, in our column, a favorable. Before you go, what's that woman's name again? Jody Dow? Jody Dow. D-O-W. Jody well, Dow. Okay, She's the state you. committee woman yes. for our Mary party. Mary Conn running for auditor. Lots of luck. You have a Thank primary you. in September. Yes. Good luck to you. You do not have a primary. You're in the final. Shot. Thanks so much. Okay. She is Karen Polito running for treasurer. She's running for auditor on the Republican side. Good luck to you both. We'll see you.